Welcome to Font Tribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Font Tribute. So this is Thomas Jockin from Type Thursday. Hope you all are having a great week. And this week, I wanted to talk about a concept called you know, that we focus a lot on type design called balance and purport in composition and form for t making typefaces. I'm going to use a typeface from Storm Foundry to talk about that and another release from it to contrast. So let's get started. So what I mean by that is, so things in my, while no, this, I always think of type design as like a cooking recipe structure, right? You have certain ingredients, you mix them together, and you get a certain proportion, you know, maybe a little bit of this contrast, maybe a little bit of that uh, weight distribution, maybe that kind of terminal. These are all decisions, you know, and by making certain decisions, there are other possibilities you can do. Uh, at a beginner level of type design, you can be very rigid in what you choose to do. You only know a certain set of methods that produce your forms, and you need to stick to that because that's what you know. And if you try to deviate from it, it becomes a hot mess. I've, done, I've known that from the past when I was learning type design. As I've gotten more experience, I've, I've found, and I see, I see myself as well as more mature type designers, what you'll start doing is you'll start... With, again, with the same base ingredients, and you may deviate from your typical expectation at a certain spot. Then that has a whole bunch of cascading implications that you have to go back now and compensate for to make this work. You know, I, I like to call it the quest for balance. <laughs> um, the one balance to rule them all. <laughs> no, but, serious. but uh, joking aside, I, I think it's an interesting concept that I, I know as a type designer I obsess with constantly. And it's a, it's a very mature, I think a more developed typeface designer may explore these ideas. So I wanted to, I found a, a typeface that came out recently that I think would cover that concept. So I want to go over it with you. It's called Amphi Amphibia. <laughs> I believe it's the pronunciation of it. Um, from Storm Foundry. And I'm also from that same foundry showcasing Cursilus Sans. Uh, it's a contrast. More of a demonstration of contrast to what we would expect from a normal sans serif. Uh, and kind of a humanist model design. And what Amphib Amphibia did it instead. Uh, it's kind of funny. That's why the naming seems so appropriate. Because I think if like an amphibian, an amphibian is like, is that like a platypus? <laughs> like that, that, those those weird mammals that aren't, that lay eggs, like that kind of thing. I think it's rather, so it's not what you expect, but it counts as a mammal. Anyways, I don't remember my biology very well. So maybe I'm very wrong in that analysis. But anyways. So let's let's drill in, and I want to demonstrate the a, lowercase a is the exemplar of what I mean by this. Okay, so we we have Amphilia on the left, and the main note you see is you know it works. Its contrast is you know a relatively higher contrast. It's sans serif. We can tell by the terminal treatment, like compare it between this and Chrysalis sans. But the main note I want you to take to pay attention to is notice so you know we got a typical terminal set up in Chrysalis Sands, but then in Am Amphibia we got ball terminal. We got ball terminal here, not what you would expect. And I'm looking at this going, huh? Look at that. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> and then in response to that, there were a whole. It looks like a bunch of other decisions were made to compensate for that. I'll go over some of those points. Okay, so I think because the terminal was added to the top, right? as a result, I don't uh, a straight stem was not gonna really pan out, I think, for the composition. So instead, what was chosen, the designer had a slant going on in the stem, as you can see here. Let's contrast that to Chrysalis. As you can see here, this is perfectly straight, straight and narrow, as you expect. Um, so we can see there are some deviations going on, which gives an inherent imbalance in how this letter form is made, which looks like the stem was made imbalanced and unstable so that it would be balanced by the terminal of the A, right? So these two are playing counterpoint with each other. They're balancing out each other. Some other things that were done in response, it looks like to create this ball terminal, you needed a certain amount of contrast built up in this transition from the stem over to the terminal. Uh, again, for this, because if it's all the same thickness, for example, if this was, if this, this area here was the same thickness as this, you wouldn't be able to define this ball terminal very effectively. So 
Again, I think in response to that decision to have a bold terminal, increased contrast was added to amphibia. And we can see it also in how the bowl is treated connecting to the stem. And notice the, it's not surprising to see a higher contrast in this joint versus here. But notice that in general, it's a much higher contrast than Chrysilla Sands next to it. So, okay, so what are the implications from these micro decisions made at the one letter form basis? Well, there's a whole bunch. So I, because of that instability created in the stem of the A, it looks like it appears that that decision had to be applied to other letters, like the N, for example. If you see the N, so this side's straight, this side flares out. It actually has a little bit of a tick out. And the same thing's happening uh, on the left on the left side as well. So I was very surprised about that. I was like, wow, that is incredibly brave to to basically instill this kind of instability in the form composition uh, built straight up. Actually, correction, I think this part's straight, and this is the this is the arc one. But basically, you get the idea. Basically, there's like a tapering going on, an angling of the strokes. These are not perfectly straight, as you would expect uh, in a normal humanist sans serif, as you would see. And this applies, goes to other letters too. So if we look at the O, notice in Chrysalis, part of this is proportion. They may chose to make it a narrower A. Uh, real, and you can just see that for the widening of the amphibia A. Uh, some other decisions too. Again, notice the contrast decisions. Notice there is contrast like thin relationships in Chrysalis Sands, but it's much lower relative left, top and bottom versus left and right. Much more dramatic in amphibia. So just notice this thinness, these thick thin parts are the thick parts on left and right, and just over proportion. Like notice how round and ovally this outer contour is versus the more narrowness of this. I think, again, it's, I think the decision was made to give a certain balancing as a result of all the decisions in other letters. So the decision, the decision was to make the O more wider in proportion to compensate for that. And then the E. So notice in the, in the O, it was, you know, it was symmetrical. Like it had its equal, like its distribution was overall equal. And then the E in amphibia, it's, it basically chooses to have a more higher emphasis on it, on this axis and thin out on this axis. So again, it's playing off this idea of like intentional imbalance, but what by the fact that it's in there's imbalances in each individual letter, then at, come together in words to balance it out to find that balance. So again, so notice how it's thickened up on this section over here and how much thinner it is over here. If it followed the model similar to the O we saw, you know, it would be I would ex you would expect. You know, I mean, quite frankly, an E of a similar composition as this, as the Chrysalis Sands E in this case. Uh, also take notice again, so notice this terminal versus this terminal. This is much more tapered in, co in contrast. Uh, and again, notice the thinness relative of that area on the, I marked right now on the top on the top area of the E on Amphibia versus Chrysalis Sands. Uh, it's E. So again, the, the instructions of the A are now being applied to other letters as well. And then the S is another great example. So in the S, we see two things. One, we see a, a, one kind of terminal on the top, and we see a sec completely different kind of terminal on the bottom. Not what you expect. Uh, the S for Cassilis Sands is much speaking. These are much more in sync with each other. Uh, amphibia is kind of like a platypus, kind of giving you multiple things at the same time. Um, what's happening is we have this kind of flared out kind of style, like almost like a glyphic sands would do something like this. And then, it, and then it just tapers to like a snake tail, basically, at the bottom. It's again, it's, it's inherently imbalanced because of this these decisions. I, I would see my impression is from the design brief that the intent was to purposely make an imbalance in the design. And, ho and, and the hope is to make it all work, though, together as words. And it also, by the way, this is applied to the capitals. I want, I'm focusing on a lowercase, but the capitals, you can see this too. Notice, you know, the width of these stems versus down here. So it, 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 there's an inherently imbalance in all the stroke. All the stems are handled in this asymmetric manner versus the much more traditional style we would see in Chrysilla Sands. So what's the end result of all this? And as I said, um, 
the, the goal of all type A designers are, is creating balance. And while there are certain known paths to achieve balance, if we, there's known archetypes and recipes we know we can go to to create a good harmonious figure ground space, the stuff we love so much, the, the fun in type A design is when you purposely deviate from it. And you know those deviations will, will be air quotes incorrect, but the more exciting part is like, how are you going to balance it out? Like, how are you going to, in these disruptions you're causing, create the balance you need to make this a, harm, a harmonious word image? And I think Amphibia does a really great job of exploring that concept. It definitely gives a, I mean, if you just look at it as words, it gives a certain, there's a certain toothiness, a certain casualness, uh, a very different flavor of voice than the, a more straightforward humanist sans what as Chrysilla Sands does if you just compare the two next to each other. It's, uh, again, it's another example when you know kind of what you want. It's like a humanist sans, you want something in that genre, but say you want something a little more quirk or a little more toothiness. I think those are great adjectives to describe amphibia. And the reason why you feel those emotions is this interplay of contrast and terminals and weight distribution combined all together to create a very different voice than you would expect from a normal humanist sans serif. This is Thomas Jockin of Type Thursday. I'm really glad to have this time with you to talk to you about fonts. And this has been Font Tribute. I look forward to talking to you all next week. Take care. Bye.